An article over the weekend in the Washington Post revealed that the Pentagon is creating an intelligence agency of its own that could rival the CIA in both size and scope. The Defense Intelligence Agency is aiming to have as many as 1,600 collectors, they're called, in positions around the world. And according to the agency's director, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, this is a major adjustment for national security. Well, it also raises some major questions about the size of our intelligence force in this country, considering there are 16 agencies that deal with intelligence matters. To talk more about this, I am joined by Tony Schaefer, Director for External Communications at the Center for Advanced Defense Studies. Hey there, Tony. Uh, what do you make of this? I mean, why not just use one of the agencies already in place? Well, the, the honest answer is, and if anybody reads my book, we talk about this. Defense Intelligence Agency has had a capability since 1995, essentially. Uh, one could go back and ironically find an interview done by, uh, by uh, uh, Ms. Starr uh, when she was with CNN with General Clapper, who was then director of DIA, back in 1995. It talked about the very same set of issues, believe it or not. And the, the whole thing is, uh, is that this is it's more of an expansion of existing capabilities than something new. Defense Intelligence Agency in the 1995 uh, reorganization absorbed something called GDIP HUMIT. That's General Intelligence Fund HUMIT, which basically was a consolidation. So while this is not new, this, this, the, the idea of going to 1,600 collectors is significant and does indicate that there is a serious effort to expand. Let me no, uh, comment on that. I think it's insane that they're saying anything publicly about this. This is truly something that should only be talked about at classified level. So the fact that this hit the, the, the New York Times uh, is, is bad. Yeah, the Washington Post. I mean, one of the criticisms, though, and perhaps someone right. on the inside uh, felt the same, but, but it's that this program, um, that because the DIA falls under the military umbrella, there are different you know, congressional notification requirements right. than the CIA. So much of what could be done could be done without oversight. I mean, what do you think about these criticisms? That's valid. And, and let me be very clear, as, as most of your audience knows, I t testified to something called Able Danger, which was a pre-9-11 effort to go after al-Qaeda. Most of your audience may understand I testified in front of the House Armed Services Committee, not the Intelligence Committees, because the operation was focused on military operations, which is Title 10. Title 10 are, are those capabilities, those laws, which govern military operations. And that is separate and distinct from intelligence collection. Intelligence collection has to do with something called Title 50, which is essentially those body of laws which allow for CIA to conduct its, military, its, its covert operations as well as intelligence collection operations. Any, theoretically, anything done to collect intelligence should be done under Title 50 and under specific congressional oversight. With, with that said, there is still oversight of Title 10, but it's done by different committees. One of the things we're finding, for example, about Benghazi is that there's a lot of different issues, but no one committee you can go to because you have the foreign affairs, you have the intelligence, you have, the, have, you have uh, armed services. And that's part of the problem here is that there may be a perception that there may be an attempt to, to bypass certain oversight by going in, in, and building this within Department of Defense versus within CIA. Yeah, certainly when we saw General Petraeus here on the Hill a couple weeks ago, uh, those hearings were closed doors, but, but it was, uh, he was testifying before several several different uh, right. committees, um, so it does seem like, you know, there are some uh, different channels here. Uh, let me ask you about another criticism, though, sure. uh, by a whole lot of people on Capitol Hill. That is that um, this new arrangement, and like you said, the DIA is not new, but it is a vast expansion, um, right. but that this new arrangement is, uh, you know, too generous to the CIA. I mean, the CIA, according to this article, at least, will get to sort of approve or deny these missions, uh, and will get to use DIA members as support. Huge point of friction. I fought this myself inside. Yes, uh, this has been something that goes back well before 95. Uh, the, 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 basically, the director of CIA is also called the director of central intelligence, the, the, the DCI. And I was just meeting with Jim Woolsey the other night, uh, former director of central intelligence. And Jim worked under uh, President Clinton as director of central intelligence slash director of CIA. It's a, it's a dual hat sort of thing. And because there is a need to deconflict, uh, generally speaking, the, 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 every operation must be coordinated within the director of central intelligence. That is uh, basically a common sense thing to do. With that said, there's inherently friction between CIA and DIA. And as the article stipulates, and uh, I can, you know, this is we talk about this a bit in my book, Operation Darkheart, everybody to include DOD case officers are trained by CIA. With that said, the, 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 uh, the similarity ends there. The DOD missions are completely different. 
often CIA will, will take things from DIA if they like it. Uh, one of the notable things about Able Danger, which was the pre-9-11 effort, is that CIA did things to undermine the Special Operations Command efforts to go after bin Laden. That was something that I testified to. So with that said, there's always friction, and I don't see it getting any better with the current set of laws or with this expansion, because obviously there's still going to be issues of who's in charge. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, uh, this friction between the DIA and the CIA. We are, as we know, right. for years, there's been, there's been friction between the CIA uh, and the FBI right. on, on matters. Right. So, so, I mean, you think that this is just going to sort of make matters worse by having yet another agency sort of, uh, not quite, but sort of competing with the CIA? Well, competition is a tough term. Uh, DOD has its own missions, and those do often get in, get, uh, in conflict with CIA. CIA sees itself, uh, and I'll be very, very kind to my friends, we call them the Klingons, because they are, uh, in Star Trek lore, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of like the Klingons, they're part of the Federation, but they do their own thing, much like, uh, you know, so they, they, they often do their own thing, and they aren't necessarily in sync with DOD. So we take great exception, and again, for your audience to understand, my book, Operation Darkheart, Operation Darkheart was going to be done without CIA's knowledge. We were just going to do it and, and, and do it, uh, do it under, under DOD's authority. So, again, this is not the first time, won't be the last time, that there's conflict. And, frankly, uh, as, a, as a DOD case officer, we have done a number of things to work around them. And, again, partnering with the FBI has been one of those options as well. Well, it's interesting, too, when we talk about these two factions. I mean, this has already been approved, though, by Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, as well as right. former CIA Director David Petraeus. Let's not forget, Leon Panetta used to be the director of the CIA. Right. I mean, do you think that this fostered sort of a greater desire to carry over his old tricks, so to speak, to his new position? I, I don't know. I, I think there's been uh, talk from day, you know, again from 95, of, of actually consolidating everything into a single service, especially calling it the National Clandestine Service. Uh, for obvious reasons, because of the, the, the duality of, of law, because of Title 10 versus Title 50, DOD has never signed up to that. DOD always feels there's things that DOD must do on its own. Let's remember also, NSA, National Security Agency, is a DOD organization. Uh, we also work very closely with NSA, as does CIA, but again, it's different. And often uh, there's been co conflict, as I mentioned before, where we've worked, we DOD have worked with, um, with uh, the other folks relating to uh, CIA, FBI folks, relating to um, the issues uh, that, 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 that are essentially Title X-like. And so there's always going to be conflict until people can actually work out the differences and find a way to actually cooperate. Cooperation is never an easy thing to do. Yeah, I think you make some good points, though. Certainly uh, surprising that this has been made public. Uh, I think a lot of those criticisms yes. that it's yet another um, organization uh, of intelligence officers out there, uh, kind of valid. But, but since it is out there, we figured we'd talk about it. Tony Schaefer, yep. uh, Director for External Communications at the Center for Advanced Defense Studies. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me.